Welcome. This course was presented between June 15th and 17th, 2005 at the Strauss Institute for Dispute Resolution as part of the Professional Skills Development Program. The purpose of the Gender and Cultural course is to make sure that we become self-aware, self-aware of our own biases, self-aware of how we interact with other people, how we view conflict, and how we negotiate. Our goal is to take these awareness levels and then increase them to the ability of acceptance and respect and be able to adapt and work together with other cultures in a way of managing and handling conflict that works effectively, safely, and provides people with solutions that are appropriate to them. My name is Nina Meyerding and I look forward to working with you as we go forward on this journey together. Thank you. I was in Texas and I was uh, finishing a class and it was very late in the evening, and I wanted to go get some coffee. And I, and I went to a coffee shop, and there was a guy cleaning up the coffee shop. And I knocked on the window, and he opened it. And, and I speak a little bit of Spanish. He was speaking Spanish. And, and I asked if they were open, and he says, no, they are closing. And I looked disappointed, and he kind of looked around and said, come in. And so I, he asked what I would like, and I said coffee. And he, he was going to just kind of take a coffee Pot and kind of pour some coffee in, and what I really wanted, and this feels like out of the movie, in the movie L.A., I can't remember what it was called, with Steve Martin when he's... Uh, L.A. Story? L.A. Story, where he, he walks up to the front, or somebody walks up in front and says, I want a decaf, single shot, uh, soy latte, uh, grande, you know, you do the whole thing. Well, that's how I order my coffee, because I live in Southern California, right? So that's what I'm used to doing. And so I, I sort of said, oh, what I really like is a decaf soy latte single shot. And he's like this. And then he, he probably broke all sorts of restaurant rules because he goes, and we went around the counter together to the machine. And so we started making this coffee oh. together. So I'm there, and I'm steaming the milk, and he's getting the coffee, and I'm getting the vanilla, and we're putting in this, the soy stuff. We're making this. I'm thinking, what a bonding moment. What a beautiful cross-cultural experience. And I'm teaching him to make coffee the L.A. way, you know, and he was laughing, and I was laughing, and, and I'm sure if the manager of the store had come in, we would have had all sorts of workers' compensation issues and everything, but we didn't care. We were just there making this coffee. So then we're finishing it, and we're, we're pouring it, and, and he tells me, to go sit down. And I said, okay. So I go sit down and he brings me the coffee. He's really proud. It's all foamy. It's all this beautiful coffee. And he brings it to me and he puts it down and I pick it up to drink the coffee. And while my mouth is right like this, he says, is it good? And I said, like this. Because it was perfect and I couldn't talk. So I did this, which in his culture basically meant something else. <laughs> so, and he just looked devastated. He just looked at me and went, <sighs> and then he got angry because I basically flipped him off, right? So then I got really, really apologetic and I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I told him to sit down. And so then we had this little dialogue where I was explaining what in the United States this meant, that this meant it was really, really good and it was perfect. And he couldn't quite understand why any culture would want to have this being really, really good, when in his culture it basically was an obscenity. But we kind of got past that, we talked about it, we laughed about it, and, and, and so I thanked him for the coffee, and I paid him, and he's like, bye, and I went, bye. And then I said, thank you, it was great coffee, and as I'm walking out, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> And to this day, I'm not quite sure if that meant A-OK, -okay or he was kind of, <laughs> but it was one of those moments. Where you're going, here's a signal that means different things, yes, different things in different cultures. So that was my um, cross-cultural moment. Well, let's talk a minute about mirroring because um, this is a, is a way um, that oftentimes you can become more culturally sensitive um, or just sensitive in communication in general. And that is, is to mirror the body language of the person who you are speaking with. So if, for example, I'll do this over here. If you're sitting back like this, and your legs are crossed, and we're having a conversation, for me to sit like this, I'm mirroring what she's doing. So my body posture is similar, as opposed to this, or as opposed whoo, <laughs> to that, or you fall off your chair. Okay. So, so this is sort of the same. Okay. Now, what that could mean is that if she changes 
then I notice the word subtly change. So now start talking to me and change your posture. So if I sit that way, this is yeah. Good. Then I might shift and, and begin to do this too. But the concept of mirroring, when I say subtle, if you start l doing it and it is noticeable, it doesn't become mirroring, it becomes mimicking. And mimicking is insulting and people will be very upset. Mirroring is literally almost an unconscious way of creating a bond and a sense of rapport and thinking, okay, how can I show this person I'm at the same place they are? Or that I hear them? Or I understand what they're talking about? But if, if the person who you are mirroring is consciously aware of that, they usually feel patronized and insulted, or you're playing a game with them, or you're making fun of them. And so it really is an art form. And it, when I am working with clients in mediation, and I'm very conscious if I have two people doing two very different body language styles. Now, they're both in sort of somewhat similar positions because legs are crossed, hands are sort of down, but your, hand, your arms are more crossed. If you were doing something dramatically different, so shift your body language to something really different, so, and, and maybe legs like that. So she's like this, and now I'm copying her, but I'm facing this way. Now notice there's two of us in this mediation now facing her in exactly the same body posture, mm -hmm. right? And she's doing something different, which would be really noticeable if now shift forward and do this. She's like this, and I'm like this, and you're back. It's really noticeable, right? Because you and then different. And so this is an area where you can be attuned to it and respond and mirror, but you can't do it so much that it goes to a level of conscious uh, reception from the other person. Plus, the thing that makes it also a little bit awkward is that it may be appropriate in some situations for a particular gender to use a body posture, but not the other. So for example, I'm not going to do it, but how Aaron is sitting right now with his leg across this way, okay, it's this very male gesture. Well, if I sat there and I started to talk to him and I put my foot up there on my knee I, like this, it's going to look a little strange. It's not, it's going to look off. What is she, you know, that's very weird there. So, so it is not appropriate behavior, you know. It's, it, you would not mirror that kind of stuff, okay. So be aware of it. It's a, it's a skill, it's a technique. It can show sensitivity, but you also have to be aware of, first of all, is it something that's internal to that culture, that if I then mirrored it, it would not be appropriate. Or gender-wise, would it not be appropriate? Or if I am being so obvious about it, and every time you move, I move, and then, then it looks like you're mimicking. So it's really an art form. It's a tough thing to do. And people who are good at it, you just watch them. And if you stand far back, like let's say at the next break, you walk around and you see people talking to each other. Just sort of observe how their body language is as they're talking. Are they kind of the same? Are they kind of standing the same? Are they doing something very different? What's their physical proximity to each other? If one person shifts, does the other person shift? And just sort of observe that as part of that. Of that. Thank you for being part of our cross-cultural experience. We hope that you have enjoyed this tape. We wish that you had been part of the class with us, but we hope that you feel part of it now. As we talk about cross-cultural aspects, and we talk about the technical parts, we talk about moving lower in that iceberg and seeing the more formal kinds of behavior and down into the informal, that you feel like you have just touched a bit of each of those areas and it will inspire you to learn more about this very, very important area. We know that the discussion of cross-cultural issues is sensitive, it's important, and needs to be talked about every day in every way so that we begin to communicate more effectively, more honestly, more reasonably, and more from our heart, and that we are aware of all the cross-culture and gender components that impact our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you for being part of us.